Hey guys, today we're talking about the secret key to healing complex chronic illness, and that really is understanding the cell danger response, the healing cycle that all cells undergo on a regular basis, and where you might be if you're stuck in the healing cycle. That's really where the problem is. See, when you think about the cell danger response, we have to look at the mitochondria. And so the mitochondria, what we know today is not only do they produce energy, but they also act as energy sensors and cell defense agents. Basically, what they do is they're sensing the environment and they are triggering one of two pathways. Either we are in wartime physiology, right? Maybe there's high levels of toxins, infectious bacteria, infectious pathogens that are in our system. We have nutrient deficiencies, whatever it is. They're signaling, okay, we're in a wartime, and so we need a wartime physiology, or we're in time of peace, and we can really optimize our function and thrive. And there's three main stages of the healing cycle, and all of us undergo this, and I'm going to explain how that works. Stage one is contain, destroy, and remove. So if we undergo, for example, let's say we encounter a flu virus, and the virus gets into the cells and starts replicating, our body has got to contain it, and we've got to destroy it. And so what happens? The mitochondria stop producing energy, and that's why we get so fatigued. They become pro-oxidative as well and pro-inflammatory. So what happens is the mitochondria, they have three forms, right? And they shift into M1 form, which is pro-inflammatory. So they become very inflammatory. They produce inflammatory agents and drive up inflammatory cytokine activity in the body. This is why when you have the flu, you have no energy, you have brain fog, your joints hurt, you just feel awful, right? This is all because the mitochondria is responding this way. This is actually an adaptive physiological mechanism that the body undergoes. And so the mitochondria are actually leading the charge there. Our overall cell communication goes down. We move into a state where we're producing energy in an anaerobic. We're not getting enough oxygen. We're producing primarily through glycolysis, right? Where we're burning sugar as our primary fuel source, we're producing a lot of oxidative stress. That's what part of what's driving up the inflammation in our system. And so this is key because we've got to contain, destroy, and remove, okay? Once we move through stage one, we move into stage two. Stage two is where we focus on repairing, replacing, and growing. So we lose, we actually lose a lot of cells in stage one. It's wartime physiology. Stage one, we're trying to take out the opposition. Stage two, we're trying to heal and we're actually trying to produce new cells, right? Replace cells that are too far gone that we've lost and repair cells that we can still repair. That's where autophagy comes in, where we're starting to try to repair these cells, break down old damaged mitochondria, old damaged cellular organelles, and repair them and rebuild new healthy mitochondria, new healthy cellular organelles. And the mitochondria are in what we call the MO state, where they're undifferentiated. They haven't moved to M1, pro-inflammatory, or M2, anti-inflammatory yet. So they're kind of sensing the environment and seeing, okay, which shape can we move into? Now, what happens is some people, and this is also a phase where scar tissue starts to grow. We start to put in scar tissue. So if we've had tissue damage, we got to clean the area up first, right? And then we start to lay down scar tissue. What happens though is if let's say whatever the infection is remains elevated, we might cycle through stage one and two, right? We might get stuck in this kind of jockeying between stage one and stage two. Ideally, we should move from stage two into stage three. And stage three is where we're focused on recovering, regenerating, and getting everything communicating well so we can thrive again in life, okay? Now, what happens when we get stuck in stage two? Stage two, we're still producing energy from glycolysis, meaning we're burning sugar as our primary energy source, even if we have enough oxygen. Normally, when we have enough oxygen, we should be burning fat for fuel. We can produce a lot more cellular energy energy from fat and a lot less metabolic waste. And so it's important that we're producing a lot of energy from fat when we have enough oxygen, when we're in this recovery mode, okay? But we only do that when we move into stage three. Stage three is where we become effective fat burners. And that allows us to burn fat for fuel to keep our body fat down. That allows us to produce more energy and have less stress and less rusting, less oxidative stress and rusting on the mitochondria. So we really need that shift from stage two to stage three. If we get stuck in stage two, that's where we're building a lot of scar tissue in our body, right? We're in this kind of growth stage, but the cells aren't communicating properly. And stage two, if we get stuck in there, we can end up with a whole bunch of abnormal growth, 
growths, cysts, fibroids maybe, tumors in our body, things like that. And so we need to be shifting again into stage three. That's designed with M2 mitochondria, which are anti-inflammatory. We start to reestablish overall cell communication. And in particular, getting all the cells communicating and under control from the autonomic nervous system, the part of our nervous system we don't have to think about. When the cells are not communicating well, we're not going to eliminate toxins well. And so super important that we reestablish proper cell communication between the nervous system, the lymphatics, all the different drainage pathways in our body so we can eliminate toxins effectively and communicate as a whole and as one. When people are in complex chronic illness and chronic inflammatory conditions, autoimmune conditions, They're stuck oftentimes cycling between stage one and stage two and never really fully clearing and going through the full healing cycle and getting to stage three. So the next question is, well, how do we do that? How do we actually get out of stage one and two and move into stage three? I'm going to give an overview of it, but basically the key is we've got to reduce our toxic load. So we have to reduce our exposure to environmental toxins. And we also need to open up our drainage pathways. So making sure our bowels are moving, making sure that we're urinating. So we're peeing out toxins. We're breathing properly. So we're respiring. We're we're exhaling toxins out of our system. And we can also get some sweating in because sweating is another great way to remove toxins. So number one, reduce toxic load, improve drainage pathways. Number two is we really need to focus on reducing stress and improving sleep quality. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're optimizing our sleep, which is when we recover and heal and keeping stress down in our control. Number three is making sure we're keeping our blood sugar balanced and stable with our diet. We need foods that are going to support healthy blood sugar levels throughout the day, foods high in healthy protein, healthy fats, healthy fibers. And that way that's going to help stabilize our blood sugar levels and it's going to reduce stress in our body. And obviously we want to maximize the nutrients that are in those foods. We also also need to make sure we're getting sun exposure, some level of sun exposure, depending on how much your body can tolerate. You obviously don't want to burn yourself. The sun is so healthy for the body, but of course, too much sun is a stressor. So you got to get the right amount of sun. We need sun exposure and just being outside in general and grounding your body, getting your bare feet on grass, dirt, sand, even going for a walk in the forest. We call it forest bathing. There's healthy electromagnetic frequencies that come from being around the earth. And those are very calming on the body and they help to stimulate a full healing cycle in our body. Being around plants, being around nature actually is one of the best ways to help move your body through the full healing cycle. So really, really key, getting out in nature, getting sun exposure, and just moving in general. And that's kind of the last thing is just getting some level of movement. If you're stuck in complex chronic illness, you might not have the energy to really get a great workout, to go out and jog or run or lift weights, but you can get some level of movement. In some cases, just walk into your mailbox. That might be all you can really handle, but getting that movement is going to stimulate your lymphatics. It's going to get your body up and moving. It's going to be a what we call a mild stressor or hormetic stressor that the body can adapt to and become healthier and more stress resilient. And over time, you'll build up your fitness reserve, meaning your ability to handle a level of fitness. Even if it's, you know, you start with walking to the mailbox, then a few days later, you feel better. You're walking to a stop sign, the first stop sign in your yard, maybe a quarter mile. So even if you're just starting really, really small with movement, that's okay. Getting movement in on a regular basis is super, super critical for healing and going through this full healing cycle and telling the mitochondria you're in a safe place. And ultimately, that's really the goal is you're trying to communicate with your mitochondria to say, hey, we're not in wartime physiology anymore. We need to activate peacetime physiology. Let's complete this healing cycle. Let's get back into a place where we are in peacetime physiology so we can heal and repair. So that's really the critical thing. We have to start looking at complex chronic illness from the cell danger response, the healing cycle perspective. This is a new paradigm, a new way of thinking about complex chronic illness and the inputs, the messages we send to our mitochondria through our lifestyle are the biggest drivers that are going to allow us to complete that healing cycle and to really thrive in life.